I had another question. What age can a child start fasting? The answer is it depends. Now, let's say your child is younger. Let's say they're nine years old or eight years old and they're overweight. The first thing that you should do, of course, is do the low carb diet. It's essential. Do keto. That should handle the weight. If it doesn't, then you might want to do a modification of intermittent fasting, which I will explain. But I first want to mention this. So many kids consume three meals with snacks. This is the problem right here, these snacks, even if they're healthy, because every time you eat, you stimulate insulin. So that child is getting all these spikes of insulin all day long. And the pancreas never has a chance to reset. And so it's going to convert a lot of that fuel to fat fuel. It's going to affect their cognitive function, their ability to learn and study in school, and their ability to focus. And the other issue is that, let's say um, a child is given something right before they go to bed, you know, like a cookies and milk before they go to bed. So let's say that's at 9.30 p.m. And let's say they get up at 7 a.m. and have their breakfast. Of course, it's, what is it, cereal, a muffin orange juice, pancakes, terrible. You only get like nine and a half hour fast. That is just not enough fasting. In fact, that child is going to be set up for a lot of problems down the road. And so another point that's interesting, I would say about 30, maybe even 40 years ago, children and even adults did not do the snacking they do now. So there's been a massive shift in snacking on all sorts of things. And I think that right there is a huge culprit on why a lot of these kids are overweight. Not for calories, but just because you're spiking insulin. So what I'm going to suggest at any age, and there's exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, three meals is what you need to have your child uh, be on with no snacks. If they're hungry between the meal, all that means is they've their, their meals are too high in carbs and they don't have enough fat or they don't have enough nutrients the child has the right meal that's nutrient dense, which is always vital, then they won't need a snack. I mean, we've become literally obsessed about constantly having food there all the time to prevent this drop in blood sugar. And that's simply because everyone's running on their blood sugars. They're not running on fat fuel because their carbs are too high. And so if your child is a bit overweight um, and you do this right here, and then you do three meals, no snacks, well, maybe you can then do two meals a day. Just make sure that those meals are really sufficient in calories and nutrient dense. There's some really important nutrients to focus on with a growing child. DHA, which is omega-3 fatty acids, essential trace minerals, essential for the growth and development of the brain and the endocrine system and the immune system. And then the B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin E, all very, very important. And so in the growth and development of that child, without these, there's going to be problems. And you never want to go low fat with a child because we need that fat for the brain and for the endocrine system as well. Now, let's say your child is really small. Let's say they're one or two or three years old and they're transitioning off breast milk. I wouldn't worry about the three meals and two snacks at that age. You know, just feed them when they get hungry. Make sure it's nutrient dense. But I would say when they start to become like four or five or six years old, you want to shoot for three meals, no snacks as much as possible. And of course, check with your doctor before taking any of these recommendations. Now, the next point I want to bring up is when that teenager stops growing, roughly between 16 and 18 years old, that's when you can start to do a little bit more fasting, depending on what you're trying to solve or if you just want to be healthy. And of course, I want to emphasize when you're growing, you know, you need more nutrients than when you stop growing. Now, let's just talk about a child having epilepsy. Researchers found that when you fast, you lessen the incidence of epilepsy because of ketones. So the ketogenic diet, especially one that's very high in fat and moderate protein and extremely low in carbs, that can mimic what occurs when you're fasting. And so instead of having a young child going on some type of long fast, you can just put them on the ketogenic diet to mimic that fast. And so the reason I'm bringing it up is because I would always, always recommend a child to be on a low-carb diet. There's no real good reason to be on a high-carb diet regardless of the age. 
but where fasting comes in is when you start having weight issues and maybe you have blood sugar issues, maybe uh, your child's a pre-diabetic, uh, then you focus on this right here. All right, so that's my opinion on when a child should start fasting. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto, or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the U.S. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.